There he is. There he is. Right there. Right there. No. What in the world is going on out there? Come on. We can't run this play if you can't get open. Come on, let's go. Try it again. A lot goes into the making of a champion. The same is true of the products they choose to play with. Rawlings. All right, that's more like it. Let's see if we can do it again. A never-ending commitment to excellence. Michigan State basketball. Spartan Conquest. Michigan State is number one. All year long, Michigan State battled adversity. From the first minute of the season, right down to the last. The Spartans overcame every obstacle in their way. And then, in one remarkable and memorable weekend, finally won it all the second national championship in school history. For an unforgettable three weeks, the magic was back for Michigan State. Three weeks when the Spartans marched on with a series of convincing victories, ultimately leading to one final conquest. But for many teams in this amazing season, a berth in the field of 64 was reward enough. The payoff for weeks and months of grit and determination, and a little high-flying excitement added to the mix. He's feeling it. He climbed the invisible ladder. Watch this stuff. Wow. The first tournament of the new millennium showcased the top teams in the country, once again providing the kind of fast-paced action we've come to expect. Welcome to the NCAA tournament. These guys are really going at one another. Look out. Look out. And shot the world.
to be like a heavyweight championship fight. The Boilermakers are headed for Albuquerque as Purdue upsets Oklahoma. And so four teams raced their way towards Indy, hoping to speed home with the national championship. Out of the West came Wisconsin, the surprise team of the tournament. Coming off a regular season with a record of 18 and 13, coach Dick Bennett's Badgers began their remarkable tournament run with tenacious defense. In the opening round, the Badgers clamped down on Fresno State. And then put the squeeze on Arizona, upsetting the top-seeded Wildcats. Wisconsin on their way to Albuquerque in the Sweet 16. In the regional semifinal, John Bryant's 16 points led Wisconsin past LSU. Knocked away, Kelly, lead pass, Bryant on. And on to a date with conference rival Purdue. Cunningham spinning, stripped. Bryant with the steal. Led by Mike Kelly's airtight defense, the Badgers badgered the Boilermakers to make their first Final Four since 1941.
Making its record 15th Final Four appearance was North Carolina, the eighth seed in the South. In reaching his second Final Four in just three seasons, Coach Bill Guthridge and his Tar Heels opened the tournament with a win over Missouri. Haywood with an easy basket. Carolina then upset the region's top seed, Stanford, to move into the Sweet 16. In the regional semifinal, the Heels eased past Tennessee, holding the Volunteers without a field goal in a critical seven-minute stretch late in the game. North Carolina moves on to the final eight. Then, led by freshman Joseph Forte's 28 points, Carolina cruised by Tulsa, completing its first four-game winning streak of the season on its way to the final four. Forte feeling it, and he gets it again. The champions of the South Regional, the improbable Tar Heels of North Carolina. No Final Four team came closer to missing a trip to Indy than the Florida Gators, the number five seed in the East. In the opening round against Butler, Florida's fortunes were in the hands of Mike Miller as the season came down to one final shot. Will Cinderella arrive? Miller in the lane, puts it up. Florida wins! Florida wins! Mike Miller with the winner at the buzzer. Coach Billy Donovan's Gators then ran past Illinois. Just gorgeous basketball. And met up with top seeded Duke in the regional semifinal, where Florida held the Blue Devils scoreless in the game's final minutes and pulled away for the upset win. Against Oklahoma State in the regional final, Miller's 14 points led the Gators past the Cowboys and into the final four for the second time in school history. Returning to the Final Four for the second consecutive year, Michigan State emerged out of the Midwest, the lone number one seed to make the Final Four. In his fifth season, Coach Tom Izzo guided the Spartans to 25 regular season wins and the Big Ten Championship, and then opened the tournament with a convincing win over Valparaiso. On our bracket, nobody got knocked off, so um, just like it was supposed to be, you know, each game got more difficult. In the second round, Michigan State held off a challenge from the eighth seed, the University of Utah. Uh, we kind of got behind, and, uh, you know, Utah did a great job, you know, but we just wanted to step it up, and uh, guys like myself and Morris and Charles got more aggressive in the second half. Led by Mateen Cleaves' 21 points, the Spartans eased past Utah 73-61 and moved on against Syracuse in the regional semifinal. I think the main thing that we did that game was just we locked down on defense. That was, I mean, we took pride in that, you know, that game on, on stopping them and just, just playing tenacious defense. In the second half, State trailed the Orange by 14. But the Spartans rallied again, this time scoring the game's final 17 points to set up a meeting against the region's number two seed, Iowa State. Utah was good, and Syracuse I thought was really good. But Iowa State, I thought, was the toughest team we played all year. Once again, the Spartans had to come from behind before they finished off the Cyclones with an exclamation point of a play. I quickly told Coach, you know, hey, let's run the back door play. Nice back leads out of here. He went up, you know, I threw it up, and he made another great play like he's been making all year. He kept saying they were overplaying his side, and so we were going to run some kind of a back door, and he said, Coach, we, I think we can get the lob, and I says, uh, I think that's a good call, and uh, Mateen said, I agree, so we were kind of all on the same page. For Morris to make a play like that, I think that kind of, I think that was a play that kind of broke their backs. They were the preseason pick of many to win the national title. And then we're off to the Final Four. On Friday, the four regional champions held practice and made final preparations for the weekend showdown. The common goal, the national championship. So 
as Saturday dawned with high hopes all around, there was plenty of hooting and hollering in the Hoosier State. Party on. The first semifinal featured Michigan State and Wisconsin. Good afternoon from the RCA Dome in Indianapolis. It is the national semifinal game, all Big Ten, Michigan State against Wisconsin. Spartans were here last year in St. Petersburg for the Final Four. They would fall to the heavily favored Duke Blue Devils. Well, last year, you know, we kind of got our foot in the door. You know, we got a chance to see what the national stage is all about. And this year, you know, we want to walk in and see what's inside. We want the whole, we want the whole shebang. It's been 59 long years since the Badgers penetrated this deep into the tournament. And the Badgers head coach, Dick Bennett, has waited his entire life for this week, and not to mention this specific moment. The big dream was, of course, the Final Four. And I'm getting close to the end of my career, and it appeared it might not ever happen. But as I told the players, if I were to die uh, right now, I would go to, I hope, to heaven with a smile on my face. First Final Four of the century is underway. In getting to the Final Four, Wisconsin's recipe for success was simple. Combine tough defense with a patient offense. And in the game's first few minutes, the Badgers stuck to their plan. Boone goes to work on the isolation, left of the lane, pull up jump, off the glass and in. Roy Boone gets the scoring started, 2-0 Wisconsin, a minute and a half gone by. But Michigan State refused to get frustrated by the Badgers' suffocating waves. Underneath, Hudson hit it off the front of the rim, but follows it in with a putback. Challenged to play their own intense defense, the Spartans put a green and white blanket over the Badgers. That's something that we've really taken pride on, you know, our defense. And that's one thing that Coach talked about, defense wins championship. The target of state stifling defense was John Bryant. Wisconsin's leading score in the tournament was held to just five shots and finished the night with only two points. Oh, what defense on the inside. Just great defensive intensity. And last touch by the Badgers. No, we just can't let them take us out the game, you know, with the type of game that they play. You know, we're slowing it down and holding, grabbing, setting screens, and not get frustrated and just keep playing Spartan basketball. Boy, the Badgers can get absolutely nothing going offensively. And that's six trips in a row. Meanwhile, the Spartans just kept plugging along. Mike Chappelle, and the basket counts. Badger's biggest deficit now, six. And against this team, six is like 16. Cleaves with the steal. Cleaves with no one near him. The team Cleaves has had the quick hands in the early goal for Michigan State. The Spartans up by eight. You know, we had gotten off to some average starts in this tournament, so in that respect, I was actually pleased. Uh, we, there was a timeout, we were eight up, and I said, you know, let's see if we can build this thing to double digits. You know, we held them to 17 points in the first half, but on the other end. On the other hand, the Spartans couldn't do much better. Three straight trips down now. The Spartans have come up empty-handed. Michigan State has gone seven-plus minutes without a field goal. I mean, it's tough to play a team, you know, three times, let alone four times. It seemed like, you know, they just, they knew all our plays. In the half's final 12 minutes, Michigan State could only manage three points as the Badgers inched back into the game. Wisconsin shuts them down the final 11 minutes, 37 seconds without a field goal. You know, you, you expect that when you're playing a game, a game against Wisconsin, and you know, it was it was almost weird. You're running off the floor, it's 19 to 17 at halftime, and you got fans yelling at you to pick up the scoring. 
we didn't feel that we took care of business there in that last three minutes when the lead went from eight down to two. And it happened, and we were all kind of, I think everybody was kind of down in the dumps. So we talked for a little bit, then we refocused on what we had to do. What Michigan State had to do was find some offense, somewhere, anywhere. And so, as it had done throughout the tournament, State turned to its leading scorer, Morris Peterson. Peterson with the putback and basket counts. Morris Peterson working hard on the glass. Bell inside to Peterson to the hole. Hits. Peterson picking it up inside. He's got 10 all of a sudden. I wanted to come out the second half and, and play with some emotion because you know, when you play with emotion, you're moving around, you know, the ball falls in your hand, or you, know, you have a little more spunk. After scoring only four first half points, Peterson came through with 16 in the second. And he is playing like the MVP that he is. Of course, at the final four, it's not MVP, it's called MOP. Maybe that's for Mo Pete. Morris is playing like that, you know, it's like he has a look in his eye and it's like just get him the ball and stop your guy from scoring on the other end. The team kick out Peterson left wing, he's got the shot, he hits it, hits a three, Peterson with 20 and it's 45 to 29. That's why he's an All-American, I mean I hate to be trite about it but uh, you know All-Americans are supposed to come through in the big games and we went to him, uh, we told him we were going to him and he responded so my hat off to Morris. Peterson's peerless performance gave the Spartans an insurmountable lead. But the battered Badgers still managed to finish the game with a flourish, as Wisconsin and Roy Boone came up with the play of the tournament. Tough shot, got it, got it, and a foul. What a play by Roy Boone. Boone's miraculous shot was too little too late. Michigan State held the Badgers to only 41 points, the lowest total in a Final Four since 1984. The final score, Michigan State 53, Wisconsin 41. Michigan State will head to the NCAA title game for the first time since 1979. The second semifinal saw North Carolina face Florida. The Gators came into the game intent on taking advantage of their deep and talented team. I think for us offensively, when we score, that enables us to get our press on, and we can get our press on, we can force tempo. Six or seven guys have led us in scoring at one time or another, and you know when certain guys have off nights, other guys step up. For North Carolina, the plan was simple. Keep the ball in the capable hands of Ed Cota. Ed's a key for us, no matter what type of tempo we're playing, whether we're playing a fast tempo or a slow tempo. Against Florida, we want to be able to, to play uh, both. We have to be able to play both. Who will it be, Carolina or Florida? The winner meets Michigan State. The ball is in the air. And the tap is controlled by Florida. And right away, the game was controlled by Florida as the Gators started out with an impressive display of pressure basketball. Miller gets a screen, some screen, and nails the first shot, a two-point shot. That's what you look Yes. The Gators now leading at 6-3. to three. Carolina couldn't find its rhythm, and when the heels began to hurt themselves with sloppy ball handling and continued to struggle with the tenacious Florida defense, Carolina appeared to be overwhelmed by the game's frenetic pace. Here comes that bench we talk about. And the team that plays 10 deep was just getting started. Capel rejected by Harvey. Here come the Gators. Here comes the new wave. Nelson outside Weeks. Look at the Gators. Yep. Banks it home. The Gators lead it 8 to 3. And everything challenged. Nothing's easy. Using its bench to turn up the heat, the Gators continued to pour it on. The bench is doing it again. The Gators are on a 10-0 run. They lead 12 to 3. Nelson launches a three, and Carolina has its biggest deficit of the entire tournament. Weeks another three. That's a 16-point run. You can see how disorganized North Carolina is. They have to go to another timeout right away. They are going back to that bench discouraged. 
we knew when we got an 18 3 or 15 point lead, we knew it was going to last. They're a great team. Uh, they deserved to be there, and we knew they were going to make a run. Thanks to center Brendan Haywood, Carolina did make a run, slowly but surely, cutting into Florida's big lead. Haywood on a throwdown dunk. Haywood backs it home. He's hurting the Gators right now with his big wide body frame. Haywood dominated inside at one point, scoring nine straight Carolina points. Carolina getting a little momentum. Set play. And Haywood lays it in. Haywood ducks it home. And so, as the first half wound down, the Heels found themselves right back in the game. After the first 20 minutes tonight, here at the RCA Dome in Indianapolis, our halftime score, Florida 37, North Carolina 34. His big lead was 15. But now it's only three. Haywood with 16 points. He just told us that, you know, it was going to be a long game. You know, um, it doesn't matter. You know, you had an 18 to 3 lead. We had a 15 point lead. They came back, and we understand that. You know, great teams are going to come back. They're not just going to roll over and die. Three, one, two, three. Yeah. Stop, rebound. Go, North Carolina's comeback would continue in the second half, thanks to freshman Joseph Forte, who had only two first half points. Forte. Yes. The game is tied at 40 40. After the break, the Heels' leading scorer discovered his shot. Two straight, Carolina leads for the first time since 3 2. Forte again, three pointer this time. Forte with seven points in the last minute. Forte scored 10 quick points in a 14 5 Carolina run to open the second half. North Carolina with its largest lead. Rather remarkably, after falling so far behind, North Carolina had taken the lead. The heels seemed to be in control until Ed Coda found himself in foul trouble. The charge call, number three on Coda. That's off the screen, drives in outside. Will this be Coda's fourth? And it's on Ed Coda, his fourth. Oh, that is bigger than big. Defensively, you could just tell that he was really playing very cautious and carefully because he didn't want to pick up his fifth. Forced to lay off Brett Nelson, Coda's cautious play would cost him as Florida gladly took whatever the heels gave them. Down four, Nelson's rampage ignited the Gators' comeback. Well, Coda's defenseless with the four. Nelson surveys. Coda has to let him go right by. Ball fake, good lead in, and a layup for Haslam. In a little more than three minutes, the baby-faced Nelson scored seven of his team-high 13 points and gave Florida the lead for good. Nelson on another trade, that's 58-53. This is just uh, target practice for Nelson. And Coda looks up in the sky saying, I'm kind of helpless. I can't get out and really play him defensively. Florida finished the game just as it started. Overwhelming Carolina again, this time with a 25 to 9 run that put the Gators one win away from the national championship. It will be the Florida Gators against the Michigan State Spartans. And so it was on to the final, Michigan State and Florida. Only one team can do what all other teams can't do, and that's win a national championship. Michigan State's the best team in the country, and um, you know we got 40 minutes of uh, just combat. Mateen Cleaves, the captain, playing in his final collegiate basketball game, and so he will try to take his Spartans to the title. We shouldn't have any trouble getting motivated for this game, so we just got to go out there and leave it all on the floor for our last 40 minutes. I don't think we understand that we're playing for a national championship, and I think that's um, important. You know, I think we just think it's another good game against a great basketball team, and we're preparing to play against Michigan State. Tonight, the Gators come in with a record of 29-7, and seven, having won five in a row in 11 of the last 13. For us, it's, it's tr truly a tremendous experience for these kids, one they'll remember the rest of their lives. I'm going to try to enjoy the moment, at least for that one split second before the tip, and, and then after, hopefully, I look back and say, what an evening. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to tonight's NCAA's championship game 
Michigan State won in its only other championship appearance in 1979. Win over Larry Bird and Indiana State. Magic leading the Spartans to their only title. There's no more electricity that night than there is here tonight. This is a special crowd. Some people say, well, you can, I can feel it. Well, I can taste it. You know, I mean, it's, it's right here. With all signs pointing to a close, hard-fought game, both teams came out aggressively and traded baskets in the first few minutes. Right wing, throws the ball in deep to Brent Wright. He's posting on Hudson down to the baseline. Turn shoot scores. Brent Wright took it right to the glass. And the Gators tied the game at two all. A.J. Granger. A triple and it's five to two. Boy, they could use A.J.'s offense. Miller out high to the left. Yo-yo's the dribble to the top of the circle. Behind the back dribble down the lane. Goes all the way to the rack, shoots it up, scores. What a move, Mike Miller. Soon, however, it became clear that Florida and its vaunted press was in for a surprise. Held to Cleese, he got free to the hole, lays it up and in. Off the press, they get a bucket. A lot of teams, when they, when they you know, run into a team like Florida, you know, they get timid, they turn the ball over, and they, they don't push the ball up the court. I think, I think it was a plus for us because we got a chance to do something that we haven't done all tournament, and that's when our transition break, and they got us some easy baskets. No problem with the press to this point. But thanks to Udonis Haslam, Florida was getting some easy baskets of its own. To Dupe, he dumps it down low, turnaround by Haslam, and he hits it. Boy, their interior men are causing problems. Bounce pass to Miller on the left wing. Peterson on him. Miller, top side right, lob down low. Haslam catches, goes up and hits it. Another inside bucket. 13 to 11. They break the press easily with Richardson. Richardson pulls it up, short jumper. Good, JR. Joey Donovan may have to call a timeout. His team's getting beat continually on the break. That was the biggest key because I think that they, they rely on that a lot. We broke the press collectively. You know, everybody on the team, sometimes AJ brought it up, sometimes Andre brought it up. So when you got a lot of guys that can bring the ball up, you know, that, that kind of helped us out and uh, didn't let the press affect us. Just five minutes into the game, the Spartans led by six, but Brett Nelson helped keep the Gators close. Now left side for Nelson. Nelson for three, book it. Brett Nelson. Two three-pointers in a row narrowed the Spartan lead. Look at this, Nelson, yes! <laughs> With its advantage down to two, Michigan State called on its seniors. First, Mateen Cleaves responded. Those are those that kill you. Then, A.J. Granger as the Spartans moved out to their first big lead of the night. Eight point lead for the Spartans, that's the largest. Cleves was the catalyst, knocking down shot after shot. Look at Cleves, yet again with a three. He looks up at the Flint faithful just to say, I can't shoot that jumper. I've listened to talk all year about people telling me I can't shoot and he's not a shooter or whatever. My last game, I was gonna come out and take those shots, you know, and uh, thank God they went in. In a devastating four-minute stretch, the Spartans took control of the game by outscoring the Gators 14 to three. Bell over to Richardson, and they've opened up a double-digit lead. And the Gators have turned it over for the fifth time. Ranger gets Haslam to commit, takes advantage. Good move, Ranger having a big night. Ranger's big night resulted in 19 points. 18 more than he had scored in the semifinal against Wisconsin. It just felt good. I, you know, I knocked down some shots, and you know, I knew that was going to be a big key to helping the team out. And uh, you know, I just, I just tried to provide my spark in that way. Down by 13, Florida refused to give in. Miller going in deep, forces the shot, no good. Haslam though follows and puts it in. And once more, it was the Gators' big men who gave the Spartans trouble, especially Udonis Haslam who had 13 first half points on his way to a game high 27. And Michigan State so far has not had an answer. The Gators are creeping back to within six. 35 to 29 and they're doing it inside. Its lead threatened. Michigan State responded. First Adam Ballinger hit his only shot of the game. And when Charlie Bell's three-pointer was followed by Mateen Cleve's third three-pointer and 13th point of the half, the Spartans went to the locker room comfortably ahead by 11. He's hot tonight. Mateen Cleves. 
It is halftime here at the RCA Dome. Michigan State 43 and the Florida Gators 32. It wasn't as tense as it, as it usually is because we knew you know, some of the things we weren't doing and we, all we had to do was make some little corrections. We realized that you know, we pretty had, uh, much had the game in control. We talked about staying out of foul trouble. We talked about continuing to attack their press. And uh, we talked about doing a little bit better job on the high to low stuff, which we didn't do the second half either. <laughs> Gators have the ball, here we go, second half underway. Low left for Haslam against Granger. Left block, Haslam pounding in, fall away, jump shot, it's good. Get out as Haslam, 10 foot fall away. He's got 15, the Gators continue to do damage inside. Boy, they go inside each and every pass. It's right and he'll have a three point opportunity. This is great strategy by Billy Donovan. Michigan State's second half strategy was simple. Get the ball to Cleves, who remained in control. Cleves slicing and scoring. And a foul. Taking the game in his own hands, Cleves raced his way through the Florida press as the Spartans stayed in front. 18 points, Mateen Cleves take it over here at the RC8 And just when it looked like Mateen had delivered the knockout punch, Cleves himself was knocked out of the game. Mateen, uh oh, Mateen is hurt. Uh, he just oh went my down. goodness! Apparently his right ankle. Oh my! Oh, Tom uh, Izzo is really upset. I dropped a few tears, you know, because I was like, oh my god, I hope I can play. You know, I want to go back out there and play. Mateen coming down. Watch, and he twists oh, that ankle. ankle. Boy, oh, he yeah. really did twist it. We're looking at 16-18 to go in this game. Only a six-point lead, and their leader down. Now, he is tough, but can he come back from that? I just felt real bad, really bad for him, but I knew that, you know, I had to kind of put this team on my shoulders, and uh, we had to just come together as a team out there, and we didn't want to let this moment pass us by. Now, now who steps up? The first Spartan to step up was Mike Chappelle. Chappelle open, top side. Yes! A triple by Mike Chappelle! Chappelle's three gave Michigan State a much needed boost. And when he followed up a Spartan miss, Michigan State looked to have weathered the storm. 55 44. I think it was a kind of like a turning point of the game. I mean, even though we were winning, I think that was really gave us a big boost. Down but not out, Florida answered with five points of its own. The Spartan lead was six and slipping. State needed its leader. And now they're starting to realize it here in the arena. It's like a heavyweight prize fighter moment. I heard the crowd rising. I even caught myself taking a little glimpse over into the hallway, make sure it was him coming out. Here comes Cleves. Muhammad Ali has been in the building at this Final Four, and this is a, a moment that he could certainly relate to. I remember whenever they talked about Jenison Fieldhouse, the old field house at Michigan State, they said the loudest it ever was was a game when Michigan State was 4-4 four and four and Magic Johnson goes down against Ohio State. He went in the locker room, got taped, and when he came on the floor, they said it was the craziest the place has ever been. I said to myself, you know, Magic Mateen, both leaders of a national championship team, like deja vu. This was a moment for Mateen. He's a winner, a champion, and a leader, and I knew nothing could keep him out the game. And here comes Mateen, please, for Charlie Bell. And what a cheer for this crowd. You know, I knew I wasn't going to be able to do too much when I got back out there, but I just wanted to bring my leadership. You know, I just wanted to come out there and let guys know that, hey, I'm back in it, and we ended to win it. He's picked up by Mateen, the breakaway. Peters into the hole, lays it in. It's 60 to 50. Pete leaked out on the left wing and got it. We had the eye of the tiger. We just knew from this point on, was nothing going to stop us from winning this game. And nothing could stop Morris Peterson, who faced a difficult final four week of personal tragedy, enduring the loss of his grandmother. The team really wanted to win, win this game. 
for my grandmother, you know, it's like, I mean, she, we knew she was, you know, watching over us and guiding us. And um, there was times in the games where I was tired, dead tired. But, you know, I would just think about her, how much she's really meant to me. And it was like, I'm instantly, you know, just, I mean, just not, not tired anymore. Midway through the second half, Peterson had scored only six points. Morris, you know, it's time for you to go, baby. But from then on, Mo Peek scored more points than anyone else. I mean, I told him at halftime, hey, this is your half. You got to go out, and they can't stop you, you know. And, uh, and he was like, yeah, you right, you right, you right. From a double team, and they left the sideline to Peterson. A pull up by Pete. Good, he buries a three. After that, you know, I just kind of started smiling because, you know, we, we, knew, we knew that, you know, if we keep working hard and play defense, and then we were going to win the game. Peterson. Oh, again. Peterson knocks it down. He's feeling it. I knew that he was on. I mean, I could just see it in his eyes that he was feeling it. He's having a big second half, Billy. 11 in the second half. Could it be 14? Yes, indeed. He seems to save his best for last, and thank goodness he did it today. In a brilliant six-minute span, Peterson scored 14 of his 15 second-half points as the Spartans blew the game wide open. Michigan State, Gus, is going to do it. Wow. They're going to win a national championship. Everybody's happy for him, particularly the city of Flint, man. You should feel proud. Look at the smile on the team, please, face. He's hugging everybody. Oh, my. What a moment for Michigan State basketball. It was just a great feeling. I was just like, you know, what did we just do or what's about to happen? One of the greatest leaders the game of college basketball has ever seen. To just do it, that's a better feeling than dreaming, you know. Uh, to really to go out and to win a national championship. And I can't really explain how I felt, but it was the best feeling in the world, you know, and uh, I wouldn't trade that for anything. And you can leave it to Cleve. And he's running out onto the floor. He has reinstated the magic at Michigan State. Oh, the greatest feeling in the world. I mean, 21 years, and it seemed like only yesterday. This is a moment that all those guys will never forget. That's euphoria. After the game, you know, I broke down, you know, I got on my knees and, and just thanked God for giving us this opportunity. And I, and I kind of thank my grandmother, too, because, you know, she's meant a lot to me. She carried me and carried this team throughout the tournament, and, and, this, and that was like my thanks to her. It was a great night for all the Spartans, especially Mateen Cleves, who played through pain and was named the tournament's most outstanding player. In his shining moment, the ultimate Spartan warrior had willed his team to victory to one final Spartan conquest. All I was thinking about was Mateen now gets the chance to hear his one shining moment on TV, because it's all he's, I mean, every kid likes different music, you know. Mateen likes one shining moment. From probably 10, 10 years old up to now, watching, you know, games and watching that last one shining moment and listening to that song, and uh, it was just a, a blessing to see me on there, you know, and know that I was the one last shining moment, me and my teammates, you know, so I just thought about everything from a kid, and, and then it kind of got emotional. I, you know, I started crying a tad bit, but it was worth it. It's been a long road, a long road. We played some tough teams and some great players. But we, we're the last one standing, and we're going to bring that trophy back to East Lansing, baby. You better believe that. There he is. There he is. Right there. Right there. No. What in the world is going on out there? Come on. We can't run this play if you can't get open. Now, come on. Let's go. Try it again. A lot goes into the making of a champion. 
The same is true of the products they choose to play with. Rawlings. All right, that's more like it. Let's see if we can do it again. A never-ending commitment to excellence. This has been a Black Canyon production.